Hello and welcome to this one. So what we'll be looking at in this episode, we'll be looking at the N10 trigger nodes. And this will be representing any kind of an action that will be starting our N10 workflow. So the most common of this one will be the manual trigger and this is what we'll be using. So if you have any kind of a workflow, you can just be executing this one using a set node. We'll be having the set node here. And then we can be able just to run this execution based on this manual trigger. So the challenge with this one is you cannot be able to run this one in production. So if you want to have this one running on schedule, you cannot be able to do this. So this then brings us to the next kind of a trigger. And now this will be the schedule trigger. So this is what we can be used. Let's say we want to have a schedule that will be running each week, each hour, every minute, or maybe each month. So the simplest one, we can maybe start with each hour. And what will be happening is that every one hour, we can be running our execution. And then we can be able to activate our workflow. And then each hour, this one will be running. So this is one of the best ways you can be able to do. Let's say you want to do some weekly reports, some weekly schedules, etc. This is the best node for you to do. Then the other node will be the in-app triggers. This is what we have on app event. Let's say you have an AR table base and then someone adds a new event. So let's say they add a new record. This is what will be triggering. Then the second example can be, let's say we have HubSpot. Someone adds a new lead on company created or maybe someone deletes a new company. Then we can be able just to trigger a new event. This is what we can be having. So let's say we'll be having a new HubSpot event. Let's say a new company has been created then we can be able to notify the admin using an email. So we can just be saying, hey, this is a new user, etc. Then also we can have, let's say, an example for email. We can have a Gmail trigger, where by every time you receive a new email, this is what we can be having. Then you can just be triggering this event. So this can be useful, for example, let's say you have a lead gen form, and then someone does fill this form, so you can just have this, get whatever response that they filled in, and then do an enrichment for these people. So you can just have a HTTP that can run a, a, a lead enrichment workflow, and then just be able to enrich these leads before adding them to your CRM. These are the simplest methods to getting started with N10, as they can just be able to keep working on each event maybe that happens within your application. Then the other one is a webhook. This can be a bit complicated, but now once you get comfortable, this will be one of the best triggers that you actually can be able to use in any 10 The reason for this one is we can be able to run a workflow. Once this one is done, we can be able to get the response. So let's say just have an example. We'll come and say a search. This one will come and say done. I'll copy this, come and add a new webhook. So this is what will be responding once our webhook runs. I'll come and say expression, then just say this one is uh, json.search. Okay, there we go. Then the other thing we just need to do is say, this one will be responding to once the webhook is complete. So if you are to run this execution, we'll be able to see that the workflow has already ran and then you are able to get the responses. So this can be useful. Example, let's say you want to build your own APIs, you want to create your own APIs, then you can just be able to use this method and then be able to get the responses that you need. This one can take a bit of forms. We can be able to make get request. This is what you saw me do. Whereby I just added this one to the browser and then we're able to get the response. The other method can be a delete. So let's say you want to delete some data information from your uh, CRM or maybe your database. Then you can be able to send your webhooks by uh, this method. So we have a various, we have maybe different methods that can be able to trigger these ones. But the most common ones are the get, the post, and the head. So these ones are, uh, and the put. You are, if you want to update any information, you can just use the put. If you want to send information, you can just send a, a post request. 
if you want to get this information from let's say a server you will just be making a get request those are the main ones which you'll be focusing on in this series so in terms of the response but this is not for this episode we'll come and discuss this in much details you can decide on the method that you need to respond to your webhook so this one kind of summarizes how we will be working on our webhooks as the main trigger for this automation then the other kind of a trigger will be form submissions so they, they any time did a revamp in how they are presenting their forms so this one we can just say we want to do a test this one will be our field name so this one will be what is your name then we'll just be adding our name here then the next action will be still we'll just be working with our forms we'll have a next page so this one will be what is your email you can just have that and then finally once someone responds to this one you can close the form and then say on form ending then this one we can say thank you so once we run this automation we'll be able to see a new form respond and then we can say our name is Zach submit our form we'll have what is our email we'll say our email is info at fibotics.com submit this and then we can say the final page so this is what you can just do in terms of triggering your automations via forms also you can be able to create some really complex and some more powerful automations just based on this method so don't fear about let's say saying you have a form or etc you can just use any as the main form also what you just need to do is be creative in terms of how you're using these forms and maybe how you are running automation what you can also you can just add a few steps in between let's say you want to do the email validation so someone adds the email you can just do the validation and if they are valid then just say proceed with these processes but if maybe this email is not correct then you can just ask your users to do the appropriate stuff we'll remove this one then just go back to our triggers again so the final kind of a trigger will be web hooks so these ones will just be called based on another automation so once we let's say let's just give this one a demo we'll have a manual trigger on this one where we run this automation and what happens is once this one is complete we will be calling a sub workflow this one is most useful in the case whereby you have a large workflow and you don't want to run this automation as a whole so you can just break this down into minor steps which can be easy to run and then which can be much much easier to manage so what we'll just do in this one we'll come and say this is the workflow that you want to call and then once we call this automation this is the other steps that will just be running so in this case what we'll do we'll come and call just this way so what we'll just say is we want to call this exact workflow which we are running we don't want to be running with other workflows and then we can just run this information and what you'll notice is this is what we have whereby the sub workflow ran and then let's see where we have this is what we want to see this is taking a bit of time to load oh yeah i didn't save this one so let's run this again here we go and once we are complete with this one we can be able to see that this automation ran and this is the response that we got if we are to go back to this one we can be able to see also the workflow ran and this is what we are able to get this can be a bit complex once you're starting with but once you get comfortable this will be one of the best ways you can be able to break huge automations into something minor and something more manageable let's go to the next trigger for this one and i think what we can check for the final part will be the ai agents in terms of the chart trigger so if let's say you are you have a rug agent that you are just building and then you want to chat with this agent one of the best ways or maybe one of the simplest ways you can be able to use this one is using the chart 
So all you just need to come is add your chat and then you can start communicating with your AI agents. So this one you can say hi. And then hi, this one. So then you can be able to get your response. This is much simple. <coughs> Sorry about that. This is a much simpler method if you want to get started with the LLMs much easier. And then you want to see the response, how they are responding and how they are working. Instead of you calling this one, let's say via webhook, this is a much simpler method because you can be able to see what is running, what is the response in a much, much simpler method just on the same, same canvas. So this will be much useful in the case whereby we are running AI agents, especially the chatbots. This one will be much useful in that scenario. But in this case, this one just be useful for our demo purposes as we just try to see how we can be able to start our N10 workload. So we'll remove this trigger and then try to look any other trigger that we can be able to run on this one. So these are the other methods that we can be able to trigger this one. So this one is also works the same way as the Gmail trigger, whereby on a new email is sent to your email, this one is what will be working. This one is what happens once you have any error. So once you are running an error uh, workflow and then it gets an error, you can be able to use this workflow to be able to create your own error notifications and send these messages to Slack. So you can just be saying message. Yeah, yeah good. This one is good. Send a message. Then you can just say error on automation let's give it a name we want to get the automation name there we go and then where this automation the error which which happened so if you want to just access this one you'll just be clicking on the url and then you'll go straight to the error workflow the other thing you can do you can just attach some messages what is happening so and then maybe you can just say the reason or the message just to be a bit more comprehensive so you don't have to go back and forth trying to figure out what happened so this is much simpler so you can just say error on this example workflow that's the url and this the error the reason for this error uh, so you don't have to keep on going to the execution part <coughs> and then uh, sorry about that you don't have to go to the execution part to keep on checking what happened what ran and what didn't run you can just be able to receive these notifications much, much easier. We'll delete this one and go to the other triggers. This will be a local file. So in case you have a file that is updated on your local PC or maybe your local server, this is what will be running. This one is more useful in the case whereby you are running any 10 on NPM or any 10 on Docker. So anytime, let's say you download a new file, you can just upload it maybe to Google Drive ETC without having to use some external tools. Then the final one will be the SSE trigger. And then you can just be able to use this one also to either use the SSE ETC. So this is just a quick summary in terms on how you can be able to trigger any 10. But from my experience, one of the best ways you can be able to trigger this one is either using the on app events. Let's say a new lead is added to your CRM, a new record is added to your table, a new email is sent to your email etc. We have a million ways you can be able to trigger these automation, these actions. We have a million tasks for ClickUp etc. Then the other method is the webhooks because we can be able to use any other data source or any other application as our uh, trigger. So we can have an action happen on HubSpot. Instead of us using the in-app trigger, or let's say the on-event trigger, we can just decide to send a webhook to our, CR, our N810 and then just proceed with, proceed with these other processes. Then the other application for this one can be, let's say you have some external forms and then you want to find an easy integration. All you just need to do is create an N810 webhook and anytime an action happens on your form, you can just be able to send this information to your webhook. I hope this summarizes everything that we have on N810 triggers and how you can be able to trigger these automations. In the next episode, we'll just be looking at different ways we can be able to perform these different actions. Once we have triggered our automation, then what next do we need to do? Thank you.